Hello, hello everybody, it's Pizza Lover 346 here and welcome back to Let's Play Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped. Last time we beat Dingo Dial in World 2, and I do have to apologize that the audio was not there. You might have noticed that uh, every now and again the audio might have gotten a little out of sync in game, or that sound effects for Wumpa Fruit and Box Breaking were not there. I just said Wumpa Fruit, Wumpa Fruit. Um, that would be because the sound was out of whack, but I tried my best to put the appropriate sounds in there in post. Uh, this time, I fixed sound and we're headed into World 3, starting with level 11, Dino Might. Well, haven't we gotten far for a pair of fuzzy marsupials? I am Dr. Nefarious Trophy, master of time and creator of the very time twister machine you see before you. Uka Uka and Dr. Cortex have sent me to end this little charade, so you won't be leaving my area with the crystals. I swear it. Charade. Entropy, as he said. That's, that's Dr. Nefarious Tropy. Or Entropy. Um... He created the time twister, as he said. Double jump. Um, and he seeks to stop us. Look at these guys. I don't know their name, but they're like fake crashes. They try their best. They're, they're derpy and cute. Um, just breaking on boxes. So this is the area of Dr. Nefarious Trophy. And we are going to try our best to make it through doing all the things. Oof. Yellow gem path. Yeah, we can't get uh, a gem from this stage. I don't know if we can even get, like, the one gem, like the box gem. I don't know if there's boxes up on the uh, yellow gem path. It's Yoshi. I mean, totally not Yoshi. Totally generic green dinosaur. Original 2 Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped. Uh, it runs faster, jumps higher, and can trample through the grass that would normally slow Crash down. Instead, just uh, kind of tromping through it and continuing at a regular pace. Because it's legendary like that. Okay. We lost our dino buddy. Our dino buddy would have been gone right here anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. Because sadly, our dino buddy cannot follow us into side scroller segments. Two, three, four, five. Crystal. Bam. Yes. Bridge over the nitro crates. I don't want to die. I do want all these Wumpa Fruits and to go to a bonus room though! Woo! Yeah, you can see what's coming up. They don't call it Dino Might for no reason. They're not just using this theme. There's gonna be a chase segment. Um, I think I mentioned this, but you can't... Out of a high jump and a double jump, you cannot, uh, belly slam. Because I'm pretty sure the high jump shares a lot of things with the double jump. Just in the way it functions. I think it's part of it's the animation that gets set off. You know? Right here. This looks impossible. The shockwave. Okay. Checkpoint. Here we go, chase segment. Yeah, these chase segments only get harder. And I don't think this is the last one in the game. I don't recall. I am kind of hoping it is, because I don't like these chase levels. They're stressful. Ugh. But that happens a lot. Okay. Oh man, 
I really wish I had a future power-up right now. It would make me feel so much better about some of this, like, precision spinning on the boxes. I'll note it once we get the power-up. It might actually be this world's power-up. <laughs> I'm not certain. No! Come on! I was still going forwards! Ugh. That's what, that's what sucks about this stage. That double jump crate will end you if you're not careful. Or just messing up will end you. Using the slide spin to carry speed through one of those... Uh, carry speed and then going through one of those little like speed boosts river currents is a real good way to get away from the dinosaur because you are carrying a lot of momentum. As one should. Oh, we didn't even get all the boxes anyway. Because we can't take the side path. I totally forgot. <laughs> Dynamite is the forbidden fruit. Uh, there might be a secret in there that we have to get. I don't recall. <laughs> we'll get secrets later. This is deep trouble. I do know how to get this secret, and this is the red gem. So I think I know what else we're doing in this episode besides just, uh, this world. So it's another underwater level. Explosives. The nice thing about these missiles is they can blow up the nitro crates for you. Which sometimes just saves you. Sometimes. If I can speak English. Sometimes saves you from a lot of trouble. Oh, come on. Yeah, you can see why I said we're gonna need a lot of lives. Because I do a lot of dying as time goes on. This game progressively takes more and more patience from you. If we press circle, yeah, oh my god. I thought the explosion was said and done. Blow me up. <laughs> Blow me up. Oh my goodness. I'm hoping we get everything one and done so I don't have to replay this level. Because replay is, slow levels are already bad, but replaying slow levels is even worse. I hate myself. I really do. Okay, I need to stop trying to show off the cool zoom zoom function, okay? I'm not a not a speedrunner of this game by any sense of the term. Though I should probably try looking into it sometime. It could be fun. <laughs> I am, however, a speedrunner of Mario 64, so uh, yeah. If you are interested in speedruns, shameless plug. A couple of my PBs are on YouTube, and if you follow me on Twitch, uh, you'll probably catch some live runs and attempts at PB. Cool. <laughs> now that that shameless plug is out of the way... Um, swim swam. Down the Jimmy Jam. And then, yeah. Make sure to spin past that stupid eel. And I don't want to get... jawsed. Yes. Oh no. Oh my god. I immediately lost my Aku Aku. Oh, I don't want to die. Ugh! Yeah, this game gets intense very, very, very rapidly! Oh, jeez. Ugh! I just wanted to go faster. Let me in. I don't want to die. Alright for one-ups. It's definitely more generous with one-ups though than some of the other crashes, which is nice. With that said though, live's kind of a dated system for having brutally difficult games. I can't. I kind of stand by the sentiment that if you if you make a brutally difficult game, give it unlimited lives so that it feels much 
better when you retry. You can't like game over or anything. So you can see there's an empty outline of a box there. Uh, take notes of, or not notes, but note of that, and remember that there's a colored gem in this stage. Yeah, it's gonna get interesting. Checkpoint. This is our best friend. We need to carry this thing for so long. It's very stressful. Okay. Ah! Okay. Objective, don't die. That is the only objective. You're also noticing we're missing like 30 crates. And we are at the end of the stage. No! Oh no! Can we even do this now? I don't think we can. <laughs> okay. Let's try this again, shall we? Um. Okay. Bam, bam. It's so stressful. I'm like tensed. It's like playing Cuphead, but more stressful. Oh. This is probably why I didn't find Cuphead so bad. I grew up on like Mega Man and Crash Bandicoot. I already know what brutal games feel like, because you can game over in those games. No, that's mean. I really hope we can do it anyway. I'm gonna try. I don't think we can, is my problem. No, no I'm not. I'm not. Uh, we have lives. If this takes too many tries, I will speed up the footage. <laughs> it's so intense. I would love to do a playthrough of Mega Man, but because of how intense it is and how many deaths I generally take trying to beat that game, uh, I'm kind of like, yeah, that can wait until I'm better. Plus, for the most part, I want to mostly do Nintendo content. Like, my my whole concept is basically games I know, <laughs> games from my childhood and stuff that I love, but a lot of that's Nintendo, so this is going to be a very Nintendo channel. As I say, uh, or I say as I play a PlayStation game. Yeah. Oh, apparently we can. Oh, okay. TNT crate. Touch it. <laughs> that's that's what spawns there. A TNT crate, it blows up the other TNT crates, it opens a secret path. With a checkpoint! Yay! Oh, we're all saved. <laughs> and I immediately die. Cool. Just as a uh, flex that we now have a checkpoint here. Twice. Just double flex. Triple flex. Really showing off that you can you can die here and your checkpoint is a checkpoint and maintains your progress Yes, the floor here is made out of floor. Oh sweet Jesus Now you may have noticed at the end of the stage that we were just at there was not a nitro switch But we've seen a quite a few nitro boxes around One box. <laughs> and that is because we are taking a secret path here. And at the... Oh, well, I guess I'm speaking a little early. But at the end of the secret path, there is... Bam! A nitro switch. There's our box gem. There's our red gem. And there's the exit. Thank God. We have been going for like 14 minutes. And what have we done? Two stages. Oh, goodness. Deep trouble indeed. And I think after the, uh, the we finish this world, we'll go back and do the red gem in a Boneyard. I think it's Boneyard. Or no, it's, Di it's Dynamite, isn't it? 
I don't know. High time, more importantly. And high time has the purple gem. Yes, this is the one where we get colored gems, basically. Actually, you know, we're just... Oh, well. Pesky little rats aren't going to back off, eh? Just to continue to gather crystals and see what I do. Eh? Oh, I love Nefarious Tropy. He's such a cool character. I think what I'm gonna do, depending on the runtime of this episode, just by doing the world, I might make next episode, like, the, the backtracking. Yeah, these people, these ladies, they lean out the window and throw bombs at you. They look, and then they throw. And you can tell where they're gonna blow up based on the singe spots on the bridge. Okay. So the purple gem is another secret route, but this time, we have to not die. Something I've been- I've proven I'm pretty bad at. Um... This game definitely, definitely wants to make you angry with it. <laughs> Bam! You have to be quick in that segment. I just knocked away some of these Wumpa fruit. And now, just like, uh, hang them high. We gotta do a little bit of, a uh, monkey bar swinging. Make sure we're on. I've had uh, times where I've jumped forward to get onto those uh, grates and do like the monkey bar climb, where I've jumped forward and then I've just fallen right off. Um, so, you know, I like to play it safe. Ha ha ha. That's always a stressful segment there. That's why I went like dead silent. Mm. We're in Stressville. Just as a reminder, we need to not die for just a little longer. It's like playing Crash 1 all over again. Here we go. Check this out. This, uh, this platform, Skull and Crossbones on it. Only visible when you haven't died at all before reaching it. Good news is if you die on the death path, it does not count as a death that makes this disappear. Um, it'll still take a life away, unlike uh, if you die in a bonus room, but it does not count as a stage death, which means the death path is still open. Which is good! Because the death path, fun fact, is more difficult than the not death path. I mean, whatever. Ugh, I hate these scorpions. I want them gone. Uh, purple gem. Sweet. Okay. We made it. Now the problem with that is you might have noticed we didn't reach a point where we could grab the box gem. Which means we are going back in that stage and up until the checkpoint, or actually up until the death platform's location, We'll be using chipmunk mode. Activate! Oh, wait, cutscene. Crash, Coco, if you have already retrieved a level's crystal, then you will find a floating clock when you enter for the second time. This floating clock activates time trial mode. Grab it 
and the clock will start ticking. Race for the end to get the best time. But beware, some elements will change. Okay, yeah, that's not important because we're not doing time relics, but that's the thing. Anyway, let's try this again. Chipmunk mode, activate! Okay, dodge the, the floating stopwatch and move quickly. Break all the boxes. Waiting, waiting. Ooh, I know what I'm going to talk about once I'm out of chipmunk mode. That's going to be interesting to hear. Um, while I'll spread up and jump. I'm glad that I used chipmunk mode because it takes a lot of the stress off of having to like commentate well while replaying a level and stress about something I can just be like, yep. Just walk and jump. Welcome back. Okay. We have to now go up. Um, because right down at the bottom there, you saw the death's block. But yeah, that route cheats us out of our box gem, and we need a box gem. It's probably better to do it in the opposite order, where we uh, get the box gem and then go for the purple gem, but. I like that you can hear the sword sound effect all the way over there. Please, I was gonna say, please just get on the box. Boom. Bam. Okay. I'm like really focused in on exploding these TNT crates and just kind of going for it. Um, so when I was younger, I uh, knew nothing about the colored gems. And I actually never knew how to make the death path work. Um, but now it's it's relatively simple to understand once you know it but you know until you do it's a mystery now we've got our box gem Road crash. Here's another motorcycle level. Man, post process me has got to be really enjoying these Crash Bandicoot episodes. Um, because something tells me we're not gonna win the race this time, and get the box gem. We're gonna have to play through this twice, just like the last one. All the editing that's going into these, especially after last episode where the audio was gone and I had to like try to get it all back together. Fun. Um. So something I want to talk about, um, also I can't get the box gem, so there's our guaranteed second playthrough. This'll be fun. Let me try to at least get the crystal this time then. Uh, something I want to talk about that, uh, at the time of recording this hasn't gone up yet and is still under, under, uh, under wraps as it were. Um... But by the time this goes up, we'll be well established. Is I'm in a podcast. Um, it's called the Not Your Normal Discord Discourse podcast. It's super, super duper cool. Uh, me, my older sister, and our friend Winnie um, all sit down and uh, throw our. No, we don't throw anything at a random generator. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm having a hard time explaining my own podcast. We uh, spin a random generator wheel. 
uh, for conversation topics. We get a question and we talk about it and then we see where the conversation goes from there. And it's a lot of fun and it comes out every Monday. And we're super excited about it and really happy that we're making a podcast. Um, so, you know, if, uh, if you want something to listen to during your Monday activities, definitely go check it out. I'll have to link in the description the podcast YouTube channel so you can uh, catch up on whatever the latest is. And, uh, you know, if there's already a couple episodes out, you can binge listen those. Or you can just skip to the latest one um, because there's not really a huge continuity. Sweet, we at least got the crystal for winning. But yeah, I definitely recommend giving it a listen. It's a bit of a shameless plug, but I'm so happy to be in it. I have so much fun uh, just kind of chilling out and talking and having a laugh about whatever topic uh, the wheel spins. I think the only thing that's continuity-based is during our intro, we will mention something from the last episode. But, you know, that's no biggie smalls. That's like... It's just a, a fun. It's fu It's funny out of context, regardless of whether or not you know it's a reference to the last episode, or like we're there for the last episode. So I figure, um, you know, jump in wherever you like. You'll enjoy the podcast. Anyway, we're gonna go for the box gem here, but because we've already seen this level once, chipmunk mode activate. And the Gotta go fast, you know? It's so weird hearing all the sound effects through my headphones. So I got like, some high quality headphones on, and I am not used to um, hearing audio through them. I think I spoke about this in one of the previous episodes, but uh, the, my CRT is like a, it was marked as like a gaming model CRT, so it actually has a headphone jack in it, which is rad. Um, and it's super helpful because recording this, I've got my headphones plugged into um, the headphone jack on the CRT, and then I've got my AV capture capturing the audio output of the PlayStation. Um, so, there's no feedback in the microphone of game audio, but I can hear game audio in real time, and it's awesome. And I love it. Oh no! We can't turn around. We cannot turn around. That's a bummer. Uh, we're bummer. We gotta try that again. That's a bummer. I got talking about my audio setup, and it totally threw me off. <sighs> That's okay. Boop, boop. I'm from a motorcycle crash bandicoot. I love all the, uh, the roads, roadside signs in these motorcycle levels. They're so cool, they're definitely worth uh, checking out. Bingo Diner, Engine Gas, like, there's all sorts of references to characters in the game. There's like the nefarious trophy race, and then like, the Neocortex Sheriff. I guess it's really cool. Like, everything, everything gets a uh, reference here. This organic and like, makes sense for the, for the stage and the context. That car just went like right below its wheel. Okay, we did get that crate. I was worried we wouldn't. We snagged it by like the corner of our ear. I'm gonna enjoy sped up chipmunk mode sirens. Ah! Oh jeez. Oh no. Is there one more crate? There better be one more crate. If there's not, I'm gonna be so mad. Okay, there is. I thought I missed a crate in that row. We almost had a chance at like getting first too, but then we found that pet because I was busy checking the crate total. That's more important. And we got our gem, which means chipmunk mode deactivate. Okay. So we got our box gem. It took like two tries in the speedy boosty mode. And the timer is telling me we definitely are going to have to make ep. <laughs> Seems like every time after chipmunk mode, I have a hard time talking. We have to make next episode uh, a bonus episode. Or not a bonus episode, but like a. Uh, you know, secret episode where we go back with some of our colored gems and grab some things. Should be interesting. Well, you've crashed a few parties before, but I never expected you to make it this far. If you don't turn back, I will inflict a thousand years of suffering on you and the entire universe! Thank you, Dr. Neocortex. Welcome to Double Header. I think you can tell why it's called Double Header. That guy's not spinnable. You can knock him over with a ground pound. 
just thought I'd share that little tidbit with you. Oh, I guess I gotta jump for this. There we go. I don't feel like avoiding that guy. So... I don't think I... I, uh, I like, I was like, can't you kill these guys? But I don't think I ever figured it out, so... There's a use for your super ground pound, I guess. This is on camera. All of the TNT crates exploded, that's good. You can also just walk around the side. I just saw that up top and I realized we were we were in danger. Okay. Wizard man's back. Obnoxious as always. Do 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 Ah. Okay. So, um, I'm trying to think of what to talk about. Like, what kind of fun stories do I have? Uh, not much is going on, obviously, because uh, at the time of recording this, I don't, I don't think this will make everything dated. Uh, but at the time of recording this, uh, we are still, um trapped inside our homes because of global pandemic I'm sure we we know what that is um, so I'm not like going out and doing stuff or like you know having fun stories unfortunately so we gotta we gotta work with what's going on and what's going on is not a lot it has definitely given me more time to uh, play games and do YouTube and Twitch streams. No oh, shoot. Actually, okay, speaking of. So, uh, at the time of recording this, I recently got into League. League of Legends. And um, I'm still pretty new at it. I'm not great. But I am pretty solid. And I have so much fun playing League of Legends. Like, it's awesome and fun. And I really like it and have a really fun time playing it. So yeah, League of Legends, very cool. I would I would do a League of Legends advertisement. <laughs> Riot Games, hit me up. I will I will do a League of Legends ad. I'll do one of those. Have you heard of this game League of Legends? Oh, it's so much fun. Like high key. I would I would say that like with full blown truth in my in my tone because I actually have a lot of fun playing League of Legends so you know Riot Games hit me up I'm sure we can uh, <laughs> get come to an agreement and uh, I will gladly do an ad for that game I would totally be down to do a uh, League of Legends ad that'd be cool. Um, I guess, let me know in the comments, honestly, would you, would you be down for some League of Legends content on YouTube? Maybe have some, like, weekday one-offs or something? I might. I might, I might.
Ah, oh, I got turned into a frog. I think that's the first time we've been killed by the wizard. He turns into a frog and laughs at you. Oh, we jumped on that. That's good. More wumpa fruit, you know? Dude! I'm trying so hard to avoid it. That happened twice in a row now. The death animations are funny until you've seen them like three times in a row and you're like, please stop dying in the same way. Oh no, I, I feel a little little cough coming on. Uh oh. Uh, excuse me in advance. <coughs> oh! Oh. Some like spit went down the wrong tube. Not to be like totally TMI about it, but it was not good. I could feel like the um. I don't know if you've ever had that where like you you swallow your own spit wrong, and you just sit in there and you're like, this is this is I'm gonna cough. I can feel it, and it's not like a like a sick cough. You just like can feel it, and it's tickly and not fun. And if you're ever in a public place, you have to try really hard not to cough, especially now. <laughs> no fun, no fun. Okay, well that was double header. We only have one more thing to do in this episode before the end, and that's fight Dr. Nefarious Tropy. Entropy. Vermin are way too stupid to understand what you're getting yourselves into. This time you've done it. All right. I still need to get the Insane Trilogy and play through it. It honestly looks really fun. I'd get to play through the first one and second one, and more importantly, relive this game now in like high quality. Time, you little skunk. Give me the crystals. Um, because like this game, childhood, you know. I get to see my childhood all remade and good. Not PS1 graphics. Not to say I don't like the look of this, but this, uh, just like recording it, I've noticed that the CRT really helps it in the visual department. Like, it does not look good. Kind of low res and but good for the time. I still appreciate it for what it is. It's. It's well made. They tried. It's just you know, it doesn't age well. It aged like a like a like Kool Aid. Aged like Kool Aid. Got kind of warm, you know, not as tasty, but it's still drinkable. You know. It's not like curdled or anything, it's just not very good. That's the way I feel about it. Aged like Kool-Aid. It's still fun. It's still good. Visually though, it, uh, it definitely got worse. It's alright. Young me grew up on old school games though, so like... I was none the wiser that games could look a lot better than this, especially because my console of choice that was current gen was the Wii. Um, so, it's safe to say that I was unawares of refined visuals. You know? A little bit of low res fuzz around the end, and I exclusively played things on CRT, so. Bam. That's entropy. I, don't, I, I forgot to explain the boss fight. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Spin longer and faster or to glide while in the air. Press the square button repeatedly. This is what I like to call the helicopter spin. Um, oh well. You insolent, insignificant morons! By defeating entropy, you have placed us all in grave risk! Fuck! Yeah! 
Raj, Coco, you must realize that this time twister machine is very delicate. Without Dr. Enderby's constant care and control, who knows what it will do? Well, maybe he shouldn't have sent Entropy at us so early. Anyway, yeah. Um, what was I talking about? <laughs> oh no. Oh no, what was I talking Oh, uh, the boss fight, you could probably look back and figure it out yourself. But I like to call this the helicopter spin. This is, this is the ability that, um... I was talking about that makes some of the levels easier. You can hover, and it's so much nicer. And you can spin for longer too. I was talking about it in the dinosaur level, because like I'm running towards the camera, boxes. I wonder how much longer that is to spin left and right than. Like, that's so nice. Anyway, next episode, we'll do some color gem stuff, and uh, if that doesn't take too long, we'll move on to World 4. There's only two more worlds left. We are making serious progress. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye!